punk rock. Poker experience, punk rock. Poker experience, punk rock. Poker experience, interview. Interview. Yes. Well, this band started when I wrote one song in my basement. And I really wanted to be the lead singer of a band. And I really wanted to just. I don't know, like sing and play guitar because I was sick of playing drums in every single band I was in. Well, I listened to the band for a while and I always really liked the band. And I think, if I'm right about this, Jeremy and I were like, dude, you should, you should seriously play this band. Like, this band should play live. And you're like, well, I don't have anybody to play anything. And then I was like, well, I could play bass for you. And then bada bang. I think that. You asked me to play guitar or bass um, with, the drum, with the recorded drum tracks, and we played. I think that's about, I don't really remember. Jeez, um, how did I get into punk rock polka experience? Well, their old guitar player was a mythical creature, and um, a unicorn to be exact, and he was way better than I ever was. But um. Some guy by the name of James Northup um, captured him and tore his horn off and thus killing it. And that was the last one. So uh, they were very depressed about it. All those guys were very just so just broken up about it and I just can't stop laughing about it. That's why I joined because it was such a funny, such a funny situation. Yeah. I don't know. This is what it'll be. Hey, hey, Jerry, I wrote a new song. You should hear it when you come back home in Pittsburgh. Maybe we'll practice it. I'll put it on a CD, and we'll play a show on December 5th. <laughs> Our annual show. And my drum, I have literally gotten no better at drums since we started. Jeremy has been my friend. It's great. I've been in a Jeremy. I've been in a band with Jeremy forever, so I really liked it. He's a good drummer, not as good as you, but a good drummer nonetheless. I think Jeremy uh, needs to pick up smoking. Oh wait, um, no, I don't know. What do, you, what do you have to say about Jeremy? Uh, Jeremy North. Yeah, he's a good guy. I like him. He plays the guitar pretty well. He's a good guy. Not the drums. Did I mention that? Yeah, he jumps good. I don't know if I mentioned that. It does not. Jeremy's all right. It's all subjective. You know what? Listen, I keep the beat. That's all that matters. Um, uh, yeah. So he sucks now. Fuck that kid. So, yeah, I like Jeremy. He's my best friend. Tanner was only on the CD on... was with us for the first CD. Tanner was in the band for, what, three weeks? What do I think of Tanner? He's not in a band anymore. That's what I think of him. Why, why am I talking about him? Tanner doesn't like to play in bands, but he's in a band with me right now. Well, he, how long was he in a band for? Like a month? Two years. How many shows did he play with us? Like ten. Eric, Eric's cool. He was in the Atari, so I don't know how cool that is. Uh, he's a little bit of a rock star. Eric's a douche. Fuck that guy. I never want to hang out with that guy ever. You <laughs> like Eric. And then it's like us, it's like this technical thing. Yes. Hi. Hi. <laughs> I'm glad that's on camera. Um, no, but seriously, playing Eric with Eric was great. He added awesomeness to the band that neither I or Brian could add. Is Eric out here? Yes. Yeah, go for it. He's moving. Why? I don't know. I have no idea. He's going out to Wisconsin. Square State. Nowhere. I don't know. Good guitar player. I liked his uh, solo stuff, but then he ruined his career by joining the Rock Rock Movie He's not in the band anymore either. Uh, that's why I think of Eric. He's not in the band anymore. He was in Wisconsin. 
What the hell am I talking about him? But he moved to Wisconsin, so whatever. Old news is gone. Jason. Jason's my brother, so I've known him forever, and he could play bass, kind of. So I was like, sure, Jason, why don't you come and join my band? Jason, oh, your brother? What, Jason? Does Jason still the band? I can't imagine packing up and leaving, like, right? right that's, what we're done. that's what we do when we get on stage, bro. We get up. get piss poor taste music. And women. He made fun of me today. I don't like him anymore. I did like him. He's. I told him I was more of a Tekken guy, more than Mortal Kombat, and he got all offended. He was like, I'm, he thought I got really offended when he brought up Mortal Kombat, and I was like, I'm more of a Tekken guy, and he goes, eh, well, I was only joking, and I, well, I said that I was only joking, and he was like, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to offend the member of a certain band that shall not be named. Ryan, Ryan is great. I loved everything that you ever did. I loved it when we would record and you would whisper in the microphone and you would make your noises the whole time that we would be at practice. Those are good moments. You're a wacky kid, Brian. Wacky kid. Brian, of course. <laughs> yes. Well, I think that I am the glue that holds the band together. Brian Labuda. Brian's my best friend. Uh, he's a total dick, but he's pretty awesome. I, you know, he's part of punk rock polka, so I hate him. But uh, when he's not playing in this shitty band, um, you know, he's an alright dude. No, I, I'd suck him off. Oh, I don't know. Ryan's got great taste in music. Like said, that's it. Go on, just lag wagon, lag wagon. Oh. Ryan's my best friend. Ten years of friendship right now. Ten years. So yeah, that guy Brian, back to him. I hate him. Yeah, well, yeah. Actually, I'm not doing it. Favorite moment might have been in the beginning. It's it's a section of of punk rock poker history where Brian would continually say sorry after every song. Because he felt bad about the fact that people actually listen to us and paid to. My fondest memory of being in the band. Uh, probably, I, I don't even think I was in the band at this point anymore, but probably when I, uh, when, I, when we played in New Jersey and got to make fun of the other bands that were playing in New Jersey. That was pretty fun. Oh, yeah, that was a good show. Maple Wood. Uh, what was it called? Uh, and Eric, Eric made fun of the noise band. Uh, leaving, leaving the band was a good memory. That was a very good memory. Um, you know, every time I played with that band, I just felt like I died a little bit inside. My fondest memory. No wait, make. I guess I got there. I forget what show it was, but it was a really good talent no, no, show, and, and like everybody in the venue danced. Like that's. No, no. I also like the practices a lot, actually, because we would dick around. And it was really fun. Do I have do I have any CDs? No, I do not. I got four any. Men, Actually, no wait, you did give me one of your CDs, oh, and yeah. I think my mom four destroyed it. Four on stage, I have that. It's when yeah, I was like I 15, that. man. Like, so, yo. And I think it's funny because Eric has no idea how many CDs we have. He doesn't even know that we have CDs. You can't ask me that. <laughs> And that's, I'm not even joking on that one. I really do not know how many CDs we have. Eight. We, eight? <laughs> Tape or two. <laughs> Whatever you make. Poetry Tinto and Poetry nice. on stage. That was, yeah, that was, that was, that was, that was, that was, the, that was the classic shit. I like that one song you did. I know a lot, no, bro. You know what I'm talking about. Jingle bells. Do -do -do -do.
My least favorite thing about being in the band was being in the band. I liked the band a lot and I just wanted to listen to the band. That's like when I joined the band so I could listen to them. But then I remembered that that meant that I had to be in a band. And I didn't, I wasn't, I don't know. I don't want to be playing bass all the time. Yeah, uh, yeah, it sucked. Awful. Worst band in the world. It was it was fun though. Well, it lasted, I suppose. No, it wasn't fun. I'm, I'm ruining my train of shit. <laughs> um, that is why I quit. The re that is the reason why I quit. The reason why I quit is because I was like, man, I just want to watch punk rock polka. I don't really want to be in punk rock polka. So I quit. What kind of impact did punk rock polka experience have on the scene? We influenced every single band that came up after us. How it changed the punk scene? I think it, uh, I think it made it fun for everybody. Well, uh, we clearly influenced this kid. I didn't mean to play with the first book. He loved us. He loved us. And a lot of people loved us. A lot of people hated us, too. I loved you guys. What? You didn't cover Reese's songs. You weren't even at that show. Okay, dude. Yeah. So I think that the impact that we had on the punk scene was that we kept the whole punk scene going. It didn't. Punk or polka. Absolutely affected nobody, <laughs> except the people who paid, and then never went to shows anymore because we were on the show. On stage antics were probably the f only good part about that band. You could say whatever the fuck you want, and nobody would ever, ever question it because you had a guitar in your hand and a microphone. <laughs> I don't remember exactly. I think I saw you guys at the, fuck, fuck, the fuck, basement. Fuck, fuck, fuck. The basement? What the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> And you guys talking about you babies. And you made a little thin wheel where you guys picked the song. But that was funny. Someone who wants to spin the wheel for the first one. Because you guys couldn't decide. I really liked when we played in Montgomery and we didn't have a set list. So we got this piece of paper and we made a spin wheel with all the songs that we knew how to play on it. We had random people come up from the audience, spin the wheel, and pick a song. And it's still going strong today. I think it's probably rivaled by none. We're great. We're great on stage. We're way funnier than Blink-182. We're way funnier than Guar. We're way funnier than More Faster. Which is great. We're really the best music. We're, we're wonderful musicians and great entertainers. I remember that one show at um, at the warehouse where the oil spill just happened, and you <laughs> you, you just started talking about hipsters and, and their their fixie bikes and everything and and uh, growing plants out of like garbage or something. I think it was thrown in there, and then somehow you just segued into oil spill and you just kept chanting "Go oil spill, go oil spill." Yeah, go oil spill, go oil spill, and then. My second favorite, well this one might be my first favorite, um, we played in Warwick at Doc Fry, it's like this town hall thing, and we played our set so fast that the guy was like, oh you guys can play more songs, you guys still have like, you guys still have like 15 minutes left. So we played the entire set again, and then the guy came up and he was like, enough, stop. And people were leaving the room, and that was pretty great. <laughs> you guys created the most dangerous dance on, on earth. Thank you. What dance is that? That's called the, the eyebrow dance. You go over your eyes. I've got no eyebrows, and kids are like tripping on each other. Yeah, I don't know. We did good. People liked us. People hated us. It was exactly what we wanted. We played with them. I've got no time. Uh, no. No, probably. I don't know. If I ever come back, you know, maybe, if you guys are doing something and I'm free, yes, I'd like to. Awesome. Yeah. We have this new kid playing guitar for us, and his name is Pat Butsu Bradford. And he's the coolest kid in the world, and he's really good at guitar. So, if we ever play a show again, 
you're gonna see that fiery little redhead up there with his nipples sticking out and his underwear probably on backwards because he likes to poop but he doesn't like to pull his pants down.